Welcome back to the fourth installment of our look at Mesopotamian art and symbols. Today we're not just going to look at one image, we're going to look at a whole ton of them, and they all depict the Mesopotamian rod and the ring. It's a symbol that we have known about for a very long time, over a hundred years now, and we have had differing ideas of what the symbol means. So let's just jump into it. This first image, 91001 from the British Museum, you see a seated deity with a rod and a ring in their hand. We'll get another look at this one later, but this particular one is a image meant to be impressed onto something else. So the image we see is something of a reversal. In this next image, we see line art of a wall fresco from the Palace of Mari, and it really looks like the goddess Inanna. You can tell because she's got one foot on a lion and she's got weapons coming from her back, is handing over the rod and the ring to an individual. And so based on this, it looks like the rod and the ring is a symbol of perhaps kingship handed from the gods to man. However, that was what we thought over a hundred years ago. Here is an actual photograph of the fresco. The image is not nearly as clear in the photograph as it is in the line art, so there is some degree of interpretation that is possible here, but that's not where the problem is. Let's look at a quote from Mary Abrams paper in 2011. Quote, One of the core debates about the rod and ring motif is whether or not this emblem of divinity also becomes an emblem of kingship. Arthur Watham suggested in 1905 that the rod and the ring are symbolic of royalty, emblems of world sovereignty. Modern scholar William Hallow proposed that the rod and ring be treated as royal rather than only divine insignia. Such conclusions are likely based on the assumption that the deity offers the emblem to a king who extends his hand to receive them. For instance, in reverence to the Hammurabi law code Stella, Hilo states, the king receives from the deity the rod and the ring. Yet the king's hand reaches towards his own face, not towards the rod and the ring. He does not take nor even touches the emblem. Van Buren, writing decades before Hallow, disputes the theory of the rod and the ring as divine investiture of power motif. She refers specifically to Hammurabi's gesture as the usual attitude of reverence before a seated god. It is incorrect to say that the king accepts the rod and the ring which the deity extends to him. Indeed, Hammurabi's hand assumes the same position as the Tel Harmal cylinder seal, depiction of a supplicant king being led to an enthroned deity grasping the rod and the ring. The difference is, on the cylinder seal, another deity stands between the supplicant and the enthroned deity, making it even more unlikely that the supplicant is reaching for the rod and the ring. Now, this is a very interesting take because we don't see the rod and the ring in the hands of individual kings. And we do know from other art that this gesture is seen as a sort of a greeting. So is this a symbol of kingship being handed down from the gods to man? I don't think so. I think it, this is a matter of seeing what made sense in 1905 when we had a very limited number of images and then having to go back and re-examine our assumptions. Re-examining assumptions is something that we do a lot when we look at Mesopotamian art because as we've seen there are a lot of pieces of art that we have to look at and you can't expect any individual to have seen them all 
and who have thought very deeply about all of them, even if they've seen a ton of them. So it's very important when we see things like this to question ourselves, question our implicit biases. We come at these things with guesses, and then often the first guess that we take, we end up sticking to. And if we hear somebody that is very respectable making a guess, that they might later say, oh, I thought of this differently, but this isn't how I interpret it now. We have to question whether or not we're just attached to the first thing we heard and whether or not we are adding our own biases. So let's take a look at that Hammurabi image that we talked about. Here we see a individual with one hand up, not out, and their other arm is beneath the first one. And this is a very, very common greeting gesture. This gesture we'll see variations on over all the periods of art that we have. Hammurabi here is definitely not reaching for the rod and the ring. And the deity sitting on that throne does not really look like they are handing it to him. If this is indeed a deity handing it to him, it looks like Hammurabi is shying away like, no, I don't want to take it. And obviously Hammurabi did become king and became a very major king at that. So in this, we see evidence that this isn't actually a deity handing over kingship to man. Now let's jump to another one. Here we see another seated deity and they've got the rod and the ring symbol out and it is facing the back of another deity. So is the seated deity handing the rod and the ring symbol to the back of another deity? I don't think so. But let's take a look closer at the rod and the ring. In this fifth image we can see the rod and the ring in a little bit more detail. The rod looks like a staff the ring is a small item, and there is a rope leading from the ring to the staff. At least it is in this image. That might suggest that this is a known symbol of something that a ruler might have, but it also suggests that because we only see it in the hands of a god, that it is a symbol of godhood. Looking further, Here's another one of those mysterious Isin Larsa images. This figure has two rod and rings. They are up and she is holding them to the sides. Another image, here is the god Marduk with a rod and the ring. Not in a outward handing position, but in a position suggesting that this is a symbol that they are holding to their chest that might be very important to them. Now, a lot of us have seen the rod and the ring as a symbol on the Bernie relief. Again, this isn't a symbol that looks like somebody's handing it to anybody, but rather a symbol that you're holding up saying, hey, this is a symbol of my power. But let's pretend that it is a symbol of kingship being handed to man. And you're a king, and you've depicted the god handing you that symbol of power. Would you not then show a picture of yourself holding that power? Wouldn't that be a very convincing symbol to the people to say, Hey, our king is holding a symbol handed down from the gods. I would. I mean, that would be my instinct but that doesn't necessarily mean it's the ancient instinct. But the question is, why don't we see kings holding these as a regular image? Moving on to another image, we see an individual being led towards the god Utu, and Utu is seated and holding a rod in the ring. And the individual in front looks to be placing their hand on or perhaps carrying a sun disc on an altar or a table of some sort. Here we again don't see an image of something being handed, but we do see the arm up gesture for the middle figure below. That arm up gesture indicates that they are greeting with respect. 
Next image I'd like to look at is another cylinder seal, and in it we have a, a number of deities and perhaps one or two mortals. So on the far left we see a scorpion man. Their hand is up, their palm is out, and they've got another hand below their elbow, and this is the traditional greeting gesture. The figure atop the winged lion dragon, that one could be having that same gesture of respect. The individual that is likely immortal has that same gesture of respect, and the individual on the far right again has one hand below the elbow and another hand up, and yet again, that gesture of respect. So it's not something of subservience. It's something that we see gods gesturing towards mortals, and we see the spirit kind, i.e. demons, protective spirits, ghosts, etc. We see them in that same gesture, and we see mortals using that gesture. In this image, nobody is handing anything to anyone, and there is no rod in the ring present in this image. So I just wanted to show that by, as a contrast. Oh, I should add one more image. So here we see the hand-over-hand -hand image of worship in two votive statues. This is a humble gesture where we often see a worshipful pose. All right. I know it's a little bit longer than some of my other videos. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time. Catch you later. Bye-bye.